Hello again, Eric Kahn here with ESI Group and the Industry Marketing Team, presenting to you today another one of these human-centric or virtual reality demos of a product and process validation that I'm going to perform from a first-person perspective and a first-person point of view to validate whether or not this environment that incorporates a new product proposal for uh, uh, an electric motor assembly, whether this is a battery electric, hybrid electric, or possibly fuel cell electric vehicle doesn't really make a difference. The source of the electricity is not on frame or not in frame right now. We're just really looking at the power source, the power system, uh, power train of this particular example. Um, what I'm focused on today is I want to do a validation of the tightening of this fastener. You can see kind of in red that hex nut fastener there. You can see another hex nut fastener just up there that I have to reach. And I need to tighten that. And maybe that's my assignment in this particular work cell, this tacto. And I'm validating is this an appropriate environment for human beings such as myself to be able to do this job. I am just a little bit below average as far as a male height. Um, for most of North America, Europe, and Asia, I am five foot six, about 165 centimeters. I believe that's about the right um, conversion factor. And I want to see whether or not I can easily tighten those fasteners down. So first idea is I could use this uh, power tool, this little uh, cost-effective hand-operated battery uh, rechargeable tool. And in fact, it does look like I can easily get this tool up into that area where I have to do the work. And I could easily get both hands up there in order for me to guide that work in very easily. You can see that there is some collision risk between this power tool and some of the nearby um, elements of this electric motor, and therefore a little bit risky, but even more risky is this other fastener. As soon as I start trying to get this tool down onto it, you can see all those little red arrows popping up into screen. Those are interference or collision occurrences between this power tool and the rest of this engine assembly. So it's probably a good idea for me to reach over here, grab one of these extenders and attach it to that tool. Now, fortunately, I already have a other version of that tool. This one has an appropriate length extender on it. Now you can see that with maybe two hands, I can easily guide this into place. It's still not super easy for me to see it from this vantage point. Part of me wants to be able to stand further back away from this work in order to do it, but now I'm holding the tool further away from my body and up above my shoulders, which all of the human factors, engineers, and ergonomists that I talk to say that that's a relatively bad idea, right? And we'd be getting bad scores on the RULA or the EAWS if I was doing that ergonomics assessment. And so every time I have to do a power tool or do work up above my shoulders, that is causing a little bit of human factors or ergonomics risk. For that reason, maybe it was proposed that this line would come equipped in this tacto with this assist device. This is a gantry mounted overhead assist device that is set up so that there could be a counterbalance such that this tool would automatically retract up and out of the way, and that when I'm doing this work, I'm actually pulling down or just using the mass or the weight of my arm to guide this downward. That way I can minimize how much effort it takes to do this work. And now you can see that it's a bit easier for me to pinpoint that tool in the right place and minimize the risk that I'm holding a heavy power tool in this area. And that should help minimize the human factors and ergonomics discomfort or risk. Another thing that's uh, notable about using this kind of a, uh, assist device is that it does assure a certain amount of alignment or squareness between this tool and the work that I'm trying to do. So if I have this tool well calibrated, I'll be able to assure that each and every time I touch base with one of these fasteners, that I am in fact square to that fastener and I'm not stripping it or doing any damage to the fastener or to the threads that are adjacent to that fastener. Uh, so hopefully that helped, uh, helped you understand how we could use virtual reality to validate this working environment. Now I could just take this headset off. I could hand it to one of my colleagues if they were in my work from home office uh, with me today. And I'd be able to have them try on this VR headset. And if they are taller than me, if they're shorter than me, then they too could have a first person point of view of what it's like to conduct this subassembly operation without having to necessarily travel to the plant or have availability of this fixed line conveyor height 
conveyor uh, system and one of these engines in front of them or motors in front of them. And that's really going to make it more feasible for us to evaluate the combination of this product and the assembly or subassembly process that we intend for it um, to validate this process without having to wait around for the construction of full-scale mock-ups or prototypes. Thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing any of your questions that you have about this demo or any of the other demos that I presented recently.